Academic writing is based on making a critical judgment on an issue by weighing up complex ideas and information to come to a well-reasoned and evidence-based conclusion. Therefore, it does not appeal to emotions, but is based on concrete and verifiable evidence. Because of this, it is preferable to write in third person. Third person means to never refer to yourself or your reader when you are writing. This is quite easy to do when you remember to simply refer to the evidence, rather than a person or opinion. Sometimes, you will be asked to write a reflective paper, where you explain the steps that you took in a process. For these kinds of texts, it is acceptable to write in first person. Academic writing should also be clear and concise. This means using the least amount of words to get your point across. If you can use one academic word or a phrase, use the word. This enables you to express your argument easily and clearly to your reader. Consider the following. The first is the description of a process, which can be summed up with a single word, study. When you are writing an academic paper, you will often have a restrictive word count. In these cases, each and every word that you write is important and must be used well to convince your reader of your argument. If you can express a point clearly and concisely, it will leave you more of a word count to further develop your argument and evidence. An academic text should make use of formal language and not use colloquial or slang language. To do this, you should adopt a confident tone, avoid using questions or long sentences. They make your argument seem weaker. It is better to use short, declarative statements that clearly explain your idea. You should also present your paper in a formal presentation. Different disciplines have different layouts or presentation styles that they prefer. It is very important that you follow the style guide for your discipline. You should also pay attention to your signal language throughout the text, such as sequences, connectors, transitions, and so on, as we discussed in the previous video. Another point is to avoid contractions in academic writing. For example, instead of writing ETC, you should write and so on. You should also make note of the language that is specific to your discipline. This is called a subject discourse. This discourse is the language that is used specifically within the discipline and shows that you are part of the specialist community. You must use your subject discourse well if you seek to convince your reader that your argument is an authoritative one. For every point that you make in an essay or report, you will need to provide evidence. This means that you need to back up each statement you make with research in the form of references from another academic document. Each discipline has a different style of referencing, so make sure that you check that you know the correct style to use. Use the library reference website if you are unsure of how to reference properly. Be aware that referencing does not mean to quote large pieces of text from another author. Rather, it means you must reference each idea that you use which comes from another author, even if you have restated it in your own words. All of these references must follow the correct in-text conventions. Check online at libguides.jcu.edu.au forward slash referencing if you are unsure of how to reference. You must also include an alphabetic listing of the authors you have used at the end of your work. Sometimes you will also use an appendix if you want to include extra data or mathematical formulas, images and so on which are of interest to the reader but not directly necessary to your argument. Most often this is a component of reports rather than essays. Academic writing will also expect you to have a clear, logical argument. This means there must be a clear and logical progression in your work that guides the reader. This means that all the information you include must support your argument and must all be on the same topic.
Do not include extraneous or extra information that does not support your argument. Sometimes, new students feel that they should show how much they know by writing as much as possible in their paper or by including lots of information. This is not the best method to follow. You must research from the academic literature to highlight your main points, but you must be selective about what you include. It is the job of the author to maintain audience interest by guiding the reader easily through the content. Basically, you need to tell a clear and logical story to the reader that draws strongly on research to support your main points. Discourse is the specific language used by each discipline. By using the language and vocabulary of your specialist area, you are convincing the reader that you belong in the discipline. It also lends you a sense of authority and provides a sense that you know what you are talking about. You should also know that different disciplines prefer different grammar conventions. For example, the discipline of law dislikes passives, preferring active sentences, whilst the discipline of science prefers passives. Genre is a text type. Each subject area has a range of text types. These types will not be the same in every discipline, but may have these text types will not be the same in every discipline and may have different features. You can see some of the different text types that you may encounter at university in Australia here. In addition to different text types, you may also come across a range of different assignment types at JCU. In some other countries, there are more exams and less assignments. In Australia, a significant proportion of assessment is based around project work or assignments that show an ability to apply information by responding to a problem or task and thinking critically about a context. This can be done in many different ways and some of the common assessment types can be seen here.